Hello and welcome to OH3 SPN Finland. Now, this will hopefully be a short video. There was a, a question today on Facebook talking about dipoles versus inverted Vs versus slopers. Now, all of these are dipoles, really, so that the description is perhaps not clear, but it's difficult to differentiate between these. So we, I'll just... This is our, our dipole, which we've talked about in previous videos. Fallon, two lengths, two elements, coax, radio. If you've been following the recent episodes, you'll, you'll be used to my horrific drawing ability. Now, when we're talking about... I mean, this is great. If you have land, you have supports here, isolators on the, the elements here. This, this is great. It's flat. It's a... Great performing antenna, as I've already said. But unless you've got a large enough yard, I mean, or land field, I mean, if this is 80 meter or 160, this can be very large. Now, not all of us have the space. So what we can do is if we raise the center point, rather than have this on a support here, we put the ballon up here on a, a long pole or suspended from trees, doesn't matter. We then have the, the elements coming down like this. And we have isolators here, and then we have them tied off to some stakes in the ground or fence post or, or whatever. So we've squashed our dipole that would be like this We've squashed it by bending the elements down. So we're taking up less space. And you, you may think, well, that's a bit of a compromise, but it's, it's not really. The, the impedance of the antenna will change, so you'll have to adjust these lengths accordingly. But the, the so first of all, we have the, the flat dipole. We then have the inverted V like this. And in some instances, if we have perhaps a high house or a, a tree, again, my fantastic drawing ability, we might have one point tied up here, have an isolator here, element, ballon, another element, isolator, maybe tied off onto a, a fence post or something. In the garden, perhaps, or corner of the house. So you have this arrangement where it's, it's the same as a flat dipole, but just sloping. Hence, we <laughs> sloper. You may have guessed that none of this is particularly difficult. So what is the most efficient? What is the best performing? Now, the main radiating part of the dipole, I, you may remember from examinations or theory that you have current and you have voltage. Now, the high current section is here. This is where the current is highest. And then if you think of these elements as basically resistance, effectively think of it like this. These are resistance which, which causes a high voltage. So we have I for current on the section closest to the center. And then if you imagine resistance reducing the amount of current available, but then the voltage peaks are at the end. I, that's not necessarily how, how it works, but it's a good way to think of it. So the, the highest radiating point of the antenna is this. You know, that's why if, if you're putting a bit of inductance in the antenna, this is the worst place. If you think of mobile antennas for two meters, putting inductance here or worse, if you're talking about a vertical, you're probably used to these, you know, a mobile antenna on the car, you have something like this. Think of the old CB 27 megahertz antennas with a mag mount. You have this inductance here, which matches the, the length, makes it seem electrically longer than it actually is for the, the band you're working. But this is loss. And this is why, because this is the highest current point. That's why it reduces efficiently, efficiency. So the, the best place, well, not perhaps the best place, 
I, I'm getting off topic now, but I'm hoping this demonstrates why this is the highest current section. And most people will try and put inductance in the center. So in, in the old CB days, some of the better antennas were like this. You have the inductance in the center and then the, the mag mount base. So you're efficient. You're keeping the high current section efficient, and then you're you're putting in the lossy sections further away where it has less of an effect on the efficiency of the antenna. So I mean, the the best place to do this really is like this. Again, if we're talking about mag mounts, there we go. <laughs> But the inductance at the end, because that's where it really doesn't matter too much. It just makes it seem electrically longer without affecting, without adding too much resistance, essentially. But of course, on a mobile antenna, that's top heavy. So not not very good because the whole thing will shake due to the, the top heavy nature of it. And if we're talking about dipoles, you, you need more inductance at the end to make up. Again, I've, I've wandered off topic, as I always do, but my point is this is the highest, most important part of the antenna in terms of RF emission. So in terms of efficiency, we have our, our three antennas. This is the ground, as in the actual ground with plants and flowers and whatever else. Uh, so. We have, what am I doing? Dipole, standard dipole on some supports. We have starting at this height. If, if this is the, the top of our masts, the top of our trees, there you go, tree. If we're talking the, the same height the, from the maximum mounting point, we then have a, a sloper. I don't know why I'm drawing the balance so big. Perhaps it's because I'm trying to emphasize the point that we need balance. <laughs> um, and we have our inverted V. So in terms of efficiency, if you're talking about height, now this is one of those points. If you're talking about height, uh, look at my other videos. I've got a height on Envis near vertical incident um, skyline. Uh, is it NVIS? Near vertical incident skyline, I think it is. Um, antennas. Where I've kind of argued that the height doesn't make all that much difference. I mean, it does in absolute. If you're counting dBs, it does. But if you're not working, if you're not a contest or I mean, if you're a contest station, you've got a beam. But if you're not chasing the very, very rare DX and you're not counting every few dBs, then perhaps it doesn't make that much of a difference for your average casual operator. But if we're talking about height and getting those few extra dBs off a, a dipole, then the most efficient change color. The most, we've said the highest radiating section is this. So in this antenna, with the vertical, with the vertical, with the, the horizontal dipole at this height, all of the important section is high above ground. On the sloper, it's here. On the Inverted V, it's here. So, well, here. <laughs> so, if you have your dipole horizontal and at the, the maximum height you have available, if you have the whole thing at that height, then theoretically you'll get a lower wrangle, angle of radiation from this setup. A sloper. I mean, again, arguable, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. But if we're counting by dBs, then a few dBs loss, perhaps, from the... I mean, it's, it's half the height. If this is the center point and this is the highest point, that's the minimum. 
this is half the height of this. So depending on the band you're working, I mean, this could be half a wave high, depending on, say it's a 40 meter band dipole and it's 20 meters high. How realistic is that for most of us? I don't know. For most of us, I suspect it's probably less. A 40 meter antenna, 10 meters high is probably more realistic. So it's a quarter wave above ground. If you were then dropping it to half that, then yeah, you will get more high angle radiation compared to the low angle DX. This is a good arrangement. The inverted V is, is good, is a compromise. You, you, there's less length taken up in, in the garden. But most of the radiation, radiating elements are still relatively high, at least higher than, than the, the sloper. So really, this would probably be my first choice. This would be my second choice. And this would be my third. But it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. So it really comes down to what space you've got available, what high supports you have. And yeah, what you can fit in the available space. I mean, most of us, we have compromise gardens or yards. It is kind of limited. And a lot of us will end up folding in bits where we can. So we'll have, going back to this arrangement here, perhaps we do have a, a high mount point. In fact, I can leave that. You know, we're talking about the efficiency I mentioned. Let's draw our flower back in. We have a high mount point. We have our ballon here. Perhaps we can do this. You know, maybe we have our, our house here. We don't want it too close to the house, so we have some sort of pole. We have a, a wire support. Isolator, and perhaps we have a pole, a metal mast, not maybe fiberglass, maybe metal, but somehow insulating, which is a very good point. We have a metal mast here. and support there. But maybe this available space isn't long enough for the length of dipole we want. And yeah, we could add some inductance. I've already said that. But if we're going for efficiency, we may want to do this. And we may have a isolator here, isolator here, and we might have this tied, tied down to here, or perhaps Perhaps more like this, perhaps we'll try and keep it flatter. And I'll get onto something else in a, a second related to maybe we'll tie it tie it down like this. So our our antenna again, this is the highest radiating section as we get to the lower the high voltage section, lower current. Just change color for do that there. So we've got the highest highest current section here is highest, and then we're we're kind of compromising. We're hanging these ends down because they don't matter too much. It's important for the electrical length of the antenna, but it won't make too much difference on efficiency. So yeah, we we can do all these sorts of things. Again, it's, it's really debatable on what difference this height makes, because unless you're talking, you know, uh, I would say for most of us, we have our house here. We may have some trees in the garden here. Probably much bigger than that. Yeah. For most of us, our antenna height will be really determined by the supports we have available. Perhaps we, we put a pole on the, the back of the house and we, we support an antenna like this. But you know this, especially if we're talking the lower bands, is that whether it's this height 
or this height or sloping or inverted V, it's not going to make too much difference. It will start making a difference when you have a, a mast, lattice <laughs> mast in your garden and you can really get the dipole up high. This is when we start getting some real low angle DX. But of course, once you've got a, a tower in your garden, you're going to do this. Well, most of us would do this. <laughs> so let's add a few more elements. Why not? Let's go for it. When it comes down to it, all of these antennas are reasonably, all these dipoles at relatively low height are going to be relatively as efficient as each other. And we can argue in theory which one's going to be better, but until you get some real height, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. And most of us are probably working with antennas that are essentially NVIS. But the other thing I wanted to mention, which you hear on the, the forums, is dipole support. I'm doing this very roughly now. So this is horizontal. And if we have a sloper or an inverted V, then this is kind of a mixture of horizontal and vertical. And I mean, in theory, for the, the real higher bands, Let's put our inverted V there as an example. In theory, for our, our higher bands, you could have the space to put a vertical dipole in. But if you were doing this, it would probably make more sense to have a, a vertical antenna anyway. So this is vertically polarized. This is a mixture of vertical and horizontal. And this is obviously horizontal. Now I've I've currently got antennas. I've got let's let's draw up here. I have a dipole, a trap dipole actually. Kind of not so popular nowadays because it's not trendy but is actually, if constructed well, it's a very efficient multiband antenna. You can do other interesting things with it as well, but maybe I'll leave that for another video. So I currently have this, which is fed by the thing I've not previously really talked about, which is balanced feeder. I also have a, a coax fed antenna, which is very much a compromise antenna. It is still a dipole, but it's fitted around, uh, I've actually got another video talking about stealth antennas. The, the thing that drove me to do this was QRM from a, a neighbor's, what I think is a heating system. So I've currently got these two, these two antennas, one, two. So this is horizontal. It's absolutely horizontal, maybe sloping a few degrees, but essentially it's, it's horizontal. This here, is one of the mixtures that I was talking about where it's fit, fitted in the available space. So that section is horizontal, the important section, the high current section. As we're getting into the higher voltage section, it's, it becomes a vertical. Now I've, I've got an antenna switch and when the QRM starts, I switch over to the compromise antenna which it still works very well. It's just slightly higher noise. It's closer to the house. And there is this difference between the horizontal and vertical polarization. Generally on HF, it's not like VHF and UHF where you get a huge loss because you don't know what the ionosphere is doing and how it's reflecting, refracting signals. You just don't know what, what is the better arrangement. And most of the time I found it really doesn't matter. A signal is just as strong on this antenna as it is on this antenna. But very, very occasionally, 
I'll hear something on this antenna and I'll switch over to this antenna and it just is not there. Or I'll hear something on this antenna, switch over to that antenna and it vanishes. It is very, very occasional, but it, it can make a difference. But when people are talking on, again, Facebook is really guilty of this. Oh, it matters what, what height it is. It's, it's, you know, you'll have significantly less gain and, oh, you, you need vertical polarization for this or horizontal. You know, put, if you've got the space, put both antennas up. I mean, put literally, if you can get a vertical, say for 17 meters or 15 meters, 10 meters, try, tr if you have space, put both and switch between them. And you'll probably find on HF, especially on the lower HF bands, it will really not make much difference at all. So my point of all of this is ignore most of the advice you get and just go with what you can fit in the space you have available. And the higher you can get the center point, the better, but do not lose sleep over it. I've, my dipole is currently, because of the the limited supports I have available currently, I, I threw it up before the winter came. And in Finland, when the winter comes, the winter really does come. So you, you don't want to be out in the garden doing these sorts of things before the winter comes. So I currently, the house is here. I currently have a dipole, a trap dipole strung like this. And it's literally five meters above the ground. Uh, it's trapped. It's not attached to the house. That's a, a bit of a lie. It's out in, in free space. It's not attached to anything. It's supported. I have a tree. This is actually a tree, not a house. <laughs> I have a, a shed down the bottom. So actually, that's kind of right. I have a tree one end and I have a garden shed the other end. And it's supported about five meters high. So it's a quarter wave above ground on 20 meters. It's practically touching the ground on 80 meters, which is my lowest band of operation. But you know what? Most people would say this is pointless. This doesn't work. You can't. I can't have a dipole five meters above the ground. Well, I'm reliably chatting to the UK from Finland on 80 meters with no problem at all. And again, look at my other video where I talk about heights and angle of radiation and the amount of dBs gain or loss depending on antenna height. So, yes, again, I'll reiterate my point. None of this matters hugely unless you're chasing each individual dB. And if you are chasing each, each decibel, then you're probably going to put more thought into this, get some high supports, perhaps even get a tower. And at that point, we're talking beams. So, yeah, put up what you can in the space you've got available. Get it as high as you can within reason. In my case, this was as high as I could get it within reason. It's just a, a wooden pole here, <laughs> very much thrown together before the winter hit. Yeah, and it's been minus 20 and we've got a, about, I don't know, 10 inches of snow. I, what's that in metric? So I don't really know what else to say. Just, yeah, these things are not as important as people make them out to be. So don't sweat it. Throw up what you can. Get on the air. You can always experiment later. So yeah, that's all from me for now. 73s from OH3 SPN.